very pleasant. Good morning, everybody, on this fine Tuesday edition of the Morning Briefing. I'm Jeff DeForest, along with one Mike Luby Lubitz. They were begging us, Luby, and we got sucked in. Yep, 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 yep. Sucked into the web of negativity, the delusional web that was painted and carved out by the bookmakers yesterday as they were daring you to bet Purdue. Every wise guy had the same sentiment about this also. As uh, people were saying, well, you know what? That line should have been three and a half, four points. All of a sudden, they're very generously offering you six and a half points last night. It was an awakening. It was an epiphany. <laughs> and you were thinking to yourself, why the fuck is this happening? They were just dangling that carrot once again, the bookies, because uh, everybody knew. I mean, what were the trends in this thing? UConn's been blowing everybody out by double digits. UConn had the much more effective guard play. You hear this cliche all the time. You listen to Jay Billis. You listen to Seth Greenberg. You listen to any analyst that's talking about college basketball, babbling away endlessly about, well, you know what wins in the NCAA tournament? It's guard play. So what do we do, Luby? Dumb as we are, dumb fucks that we are. We zero in on the matchup in the paint. Who gives a cat crap about that? Zach Eady had a big ball game there, 37 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, the guy was uh, on his game. I mean, he did what he was supposed to do. And everybody else on the Purdue squad was a complete bricklayer. My God. Mm-hmm. Well defended by UConn. And so UConn wins the game by 15 points. They cover the spread. What, what, a, what a great degenerate ball club this is. I, they, they should be already in the degenerate Hall of Fame. I know they're going to go down in history as one of the great teams of all time because of the fact that – and it, these were – Largely two different teams, were they not, Luby? That was the surprising yes. thing about this. Three UConn guys went to the NBA off of last year's squad. Yep. And they come back and repeat. Pretty amazing. Also catapulting the Hurleys into possibly being, I mean, I still give the nod to the Harbaugh's, would you? As America's first sports family. Harbaugh's, you got uh, Jim Harbaugh wins a college national championship. John Harbaugh, he has a Super Bowl championship. Their father was a legendary coach and very accomplished. The Hurleys, the father, I mean, unbelievable. I think he had 26 straight t- uh, state titles as a high school basketball coach. Legendary stuff. Bobby Hurley, uh, two-time uh, NCAA champion as a player with Duke, one of the last teams to repeat. I guess Florida uh, repeated in, what, 2007, 2008, somewhere around there. 2006, 2007, yeah. Like I said, right in that time period. There, <laughs> there were a lot of stats uh, man, proclaiming uh, – and, and giving you evidence that UConn is one of the great franchises of all time. Uh, six national championships now for uh, the University of Connecticut, going back to Jimmy Calhoun. That they've done it in a short span of time. I mean, this is six national championships in, in the last 25 years, uh, which is pretty incredible if you think about it. That's uh, almost winning one uh, every four years. Amazing. And uh, they've done it with a variety of different uh, configurations of players and a variety of different coaches and uh, they're right there knocking on the door. Only two teams in NCAA history have more titles. Uh, Kentucky would be one with eight. And a lot of those were accomplished uh, as soon as they put up the peach basket. Uh, a lot of those uh, are very, very distant historical accomplishments. And then, of course, you had the UCLA run uh, with uh, the Wizard of Westwood, where they won 11 championships. And that's going to be very difficult to eclipse, uh, you, you might imagine. Uh, no pun intended there with what was uh, absolutely a psychotic episode for the country yesterday as uh, people were looking at the eclipse. Did, did you happen to look up at the sun, Luby? I see. Are you seeing spots today? What's going on? It was cloudy here. I So, like, I didn't even, I was like, I'm not going to start driving around to try and see, not see this thing. I didn't have the glasses either, so I don't know. I, online and on TV, they kept showing what it would look like. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Dark sun. Yeah, oh. I ended up uh, watching an event that was taking place outside my window on TV. <laughs> Boy, talk about becoming a sedentary uh, society here. But uh, very spectacular, a 15-point win. Uh, all of the bookies uh, ended up getting clobbered because everybody was betting UConn anyway. They didn't care. You could have given them uh, 25 points. People still would have been tempted to take UConn in this thing. Uh, well-deserved national championship. Um, oh, where do you put them, the Harbaugh's or the Hurley's? Is it still the Harbaugh's, number one sports family uh, in America? Yeah, because they amassed uh, legend in both college and the pros. And then their father did it in, I think, various ages, whereas Bob Hurley Sr., I think, is like a high school grade. And then Danny, uh, I mean, Bobby Hurley's a nice college coach, but he's not a great college coach. And then Danny Hurley's a great college coach. I, I'll put the Harbaugh's a little bit ahead because of just the levels they've hit. Like Jim's now won a national title in college. John's won a, a Super Bowl title. Jim's been to the Super Bowl as a head coach. 
their father, Jack, I think coached in college, also coached in high school. Like, I would say the Harbaugh's one, but the Hurleys are catching up. I mean, Danny Hurley, as much as he bitches at the refs and it's fucking annoying to watch, um, he's a damn good coach. This team, they changed out most of their roster and they were somehow more dominant. Yeah, I mean, is he a guy that's uh, constantly feeling like he's getting screwed? My God. He like throws tantrums and it's like the, the animation guy. too is uh, <laughs> unbelievable. The exaggeration, every call. I mean, he runs out to mid court. Everybody else would get thrown out of the game immediately. Yes. Rick Pitino yes. does that, man. He's gone. He's in the locker room. He's on the B bus all the way back to uh, his home in uh, Riverside there, Riverdale, wherever that, uh, you know, location is this spiffy place that he lives. Uh, a lot of rumors too. Uh, and Hurley uh, denounced this immediately, uh, laughed it off, shrugged it off that he's going to Kentucky where uh, John Calipari has departed for Arkansas, $8.5 million a year from Arkansas to uh, replace Musselman, who went to USC. Uh, I mean, isn't it great to be a college basketball coach? Uh, you don't even have to win at all. And uh, the uh, riches are just bestowed upon you. Uh, Calipari, of course, uh, well, what, what did he spend there uh, at uh, Kentucky? What, was he there like 15 years, something like that? Won the championship, went to four Final Fours, uh, had some of the best talent that you'll ever see. Half the guards in the NBA came out of Calipari's one-and-done program at Kentucky and now somewhat wide open for that position. Uh, I, I don't know. It would have been kind of odd, wouldn't it, for Hurley to win back-to-back -back championships and then leave for another program that wasn't as good as his over the last couple of years? Uh, kind of strange. I know it's the mecca of college basketball. You would have to think the most distinctive program in the history of the game. Holy Adolph Rupp. UCLA, I don't know that they ever get anywhere near the level that they had with the Wizard, and that may be largely due to the fact that uh, Sam Gilbert, one of their big boosters, checked out. And uh, who knew, right? I mean, the, the Wizard, above reproach, the guy that stood for everything that was ethically right about sports, about life, about being an adult, about uh, growing up and learning through the college basketball experience, how to be a real man and influence society. And it turned out, Every player was on the take there. They were all going over to this booster's house and uh, getting bags full of cash while uh, the wizard was going, you know what? Here it is. Here's my pyramid for success. Yeah, you're sitting on a pile of fucking money. John, I, I love the wizard. You, you couldn't have more respect for a guy. But to find out, isn't that the worst, Louie? When you find out somebody that you have the ultimate of faith in and the ultimate of respect for turned out to be a lousy liar and a cheat. What do you Honestly. think? Louis? No, it sucks. Yeah, that's the worst. We're probably the only show that's portraying the Wizard of Westwood <laughs> in that light today. But it was true. We had a funnel of cash coming from this one guy who was having players over his house. We, we always uh, reference the idea that uh, here was uh, Lou Alcindor at the time, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the eventuality. And uh, this was a guy that sat in the fetal position in his room while he was living in New York. He, he didn't want to leave the house. And all of a sudden he's saying, hey, you know what? I might take up surfing. Let me go to Malibu. That only happened for one reason, and that had to be a big fat pile of cash coming from Sam Gilbert. Uh, not to diminish in any way well, what happened with the University of Connecticut last night. Uh, congratulations go to them. Uh, if Zach Eady, uh, people that were debating whether he'd be a pro, well, wouldn't he be effective coming into a pro game at least for a few yes. minutes? He's... Blocking a couple of shots? or I mean, if all you did was tell him to go out there and use his six fouls, he, he might be the somewhat of an impactful rebound, player. How effective he is around the basket with both his right and left hand. He will have a spot in the NBA. Now, I will say, watching that game, he's not uh, hes not the switches. He doesn't know what to do with them at all, and that's literally the entire NBA defensive game. And he's not his help defense is actually not as good as it should be. Like, no. If he knows, okay, his guy's taken care of, he will go and block a shot. But he, most great big men, when a, a guy is going to the basket, they don't give a shit. Their only focus is to block the shot. He allows a lot of layups. Like, it's weird to see a big dude standing there and have guards going layup on him. Like, and that's something that can't happen. Like, if that's what his job is, is sit there and be a rim protector. He needs to get much better at that. So, yeah, I think he'll be in the league like we talked about. He'll be a late first-round pick. He's definitely useful in rotation. He's just not going to be a front-of-the-line rotation guy because he's just – it's a different era now. I mean, he he doesn't move well. He just he just yeah, Connecticut move. had a lot of guys uh, get in behind Zach Eady. Yeah, easily. Their easily. guards were constantly uh, getting layups, uncontested layups in behind Zach Eady. Not to uh, knock the guy because uh, he had a sensational tournament. Yeah, yeah. And at seven four, he looked like he was going to dominate Klingon. Uh, although uh, Klingon came back and redeemed himself a lot later yeah, on in nice. the ball game. And, and I think they did wear out Zach Eady a, a yes. little bit because uh, he he was clearly getting gassed 
uh, as early as the first half of that contest. All right, congratulations to UConn. They win a national championship. All the betters that got sucked in, including us, Luby. We both sat here on the show yesterday and said, hey, I think uh, Purdue with the points, huh? I really did. I, that was not the brightest moment of mine, but <laughs> I, I, I felt like the Purdue guards we had heard so much about all year. Like all tournament, they kept talking about the guards we saw in the regular season. They yes. never played. They never showed up. And that was the one fear I had was the Yukon guards are supposedly better. Why would they now play their best game? And they didn't. They played they were they were they just looked bad. like guys they picked down in the crowd, didn't they? Yep. Only ineffective uh, in that ball game uh, last night. Uh, all right, uh, the NBA kind of crazy. Uh, the NBA East. Uh, I was just reading an article about the New York Knicks. They have four games left, and uh, they're sitting there right now. I believe in the fourth spot in the uh, in, in the regular season standings in the Eastern Conference. But uh, they could fall all the way down to like eight very easily in these last four games. It's crazy the juxtaposition that could take place between the Milwaukee Bucks at number two. And uh, going all the way down to the Philadelphia 76ers and uh, the Miami Heat now occupy the eighth spot. Everybody's trying to dodge that play-in game and the treachery uh, of possibly going on the road and having to play one game. And uh, if you lose, you're out. You don't even qualify for the postseason after uh, this arduous regular season that you just sustained your way through. And so uh, a lot can happen. Uh, it's interesting. But uh, the Knicks have had uh, a wild season. Uh and plagued by injuries, they lose Julius Randle for the year. Who, who's uh, the medical advisor for the Knicks organization here? Uh, that that was a strange story where he's out for a couple of weeks. Then the next thing you know, he may have surgery. Then he's out for a couple of more weeks. Then he's about to come back. And finally, he ends up having surgery to uh, end his season. And Anobi, who they traded for and appeared to be just an absolute spark for the Knicks, who were doing a pretty decent job of winning games uh, early in the season. They get this guy. They catch fire. Look like they were going to be uh, legitimate contenders. And the next thing you know, they're, they're uh, dealing with injuries to virtually everybody. They still kind of hang in there. Uh, it's wild. I mean, just Miss Sugar, what's happening in this uh, NBA East. Uh, well, we've said this before. Uh, I'm normally uh, radically opposed to any kind of expansion and bastardizing of the postseason where you add in more teams. It just seems like, and everybody always calls it a money grab, but at the same time, but you're trying to find ways to preserve the integrity of your regular season in sports. I, I think baseball's done a good job of that by making late season games much more meaningful with yes. the way that they expanded the playoffs, e even though you, you want to throw up thinking, what, 20 teams in the playoffs? That's ridiculous. And uh, the NBA, uh, with uh, this uh, play-in thing, uh, has actually established uh, a much heavier meaning to a lot of games in the regular season, including these last four games. Uh in the past, uh, the Knicks would have just said, hey, good, we're in the playoffs. It doesn't matter where we are. Maybe we want to dodge playing Boston in the first round uh, and have a chance to kind of get our feet wet and uh, get some momentum going by uh, having an easier first-round matchup. But uh, going to come right down to the wire. Meshuggah, I guess, would be the way to describe it. If you're going to use uh, Yiddish slang, Luby, which uh, I think is also applicable. Uh, the thing I love about Yiddish slang, it, it's just like the word shalom, which can have uh, multiple meanings. It could be hello. It could be goodbye. You could be kissing some guy goodbye and just say shalom. Or you could be welcoming uh, some hot babe into your life and you would say shalom. Mm -hmm. And the other word that I really like that has multiple meanings is the word schlep, Luby. Because it, it could be something that describes uh, the arduous nature of traveling a distance. Like, geez, man, that's some schlep to go from uh, where we live here in Broward County, Florida, down to Dade County. It's a schlep to get to Miami, to South Beach. Maybe you don't want to go because uh, it's a bit of a schlep. Yeah. Or it could be that uh, you're you're grabbing a bunch of stuff that uh, may be unnecessary, right? Uh, I don't want to schlep all that stuff to the beach. You're schlepping. It could be, and uh, in the case of Tom Thibodeau, it, it's it's a schlep is a description of a guy that just looks uh, yes. like a collection uh, of things that, that he's wearing that, that he must have gotten from uh, some kind of uh, either a pawn shop or a thrift store. No? Yep, yep. And, and, of course, the great line in the uh, show Gypsy, uh, Gypsy, uh, Gypsy Rose Lee story. Uh, Once I was a schlepper, now I'm Miss Mazeppa. That's it. But I, I, Thibodeau uh, yeah, just is the epitome. I, I, every time I think of the word schlep, I think his picture is right there in the Hebrew dictionary. Schlep, Tom Thibodeau. But done a, a pretty good job for a guy that uh, is always under kind of the scrutiny of, well, he's too much of a hard-on for anybody to play the modern game with. Seems like he's uh, found a way to adapt, and uh, we'll see what happens, how that all shakes out. I know you're concerned about your Miami Heat, Luby, because uh, they lost that what would ultimately be a tiebreaker game to the Indiana Pacers, yep. Yep. And, and that pretty much crushed them. 
into a position where they're going to have to climb out in the last few games of the season, four or five games of the season, out of that spot to be in the playing tournament, or they may end up going on the road to Philadelphia to play a one-game proposition, which uh, you would have to think when a bead back in there uh, is a little bit prohibitive. All right, uh, the other thing that's happening, uh, the Masters, and, and talk about getting sucked in, uh, the headlines are already indicating, you know what they're saying, Luby, the Tiger's in there with a shot. Oh, get the fuck out of here. The Masters. Now, I would be more inclined to bet this because it's more frequent of an occurrence that Tiger Woods will not finish the second exactly. round of the tournament. Exactly. It, it will be some kind of withdrawal for whatever reason, whether it's the ankle, the back. And we, we don't wish uh, any ill will upon Tiger Woods. Uh, without him in the game right now, the game is an absolute fucking chaotic mess in terms yes. of trying to identify something that you can relate to Scotty Scheffler has kind of saved the day with sensational play. He had a string just snap recently of like 25 straight rounds under par. He's been great back-to-back -back winner, won the tournament players championship, and uh, is the favorite to uh, win the Masters. And then you have uh, the chaotic element of the Live Tour players coming back. How great is this, too, when you get, grab like $300 million to be on the Live Tour, as uh, several players have, like John Rahm, and you only play three-round tournaments – and there's only 14 of them a year. <laughs> you imagine that, Luby? You're now playing 42 rounds of golf a year. You used to play that in a matter of weeks. 42 rounds of golf a year for $300 million plus. Uh, I, I don't know. Does that include what you win? Are they just guaranteeing you a minimum of $300 million? Probably. So uh, you win $4 million and the Saudis come with a bag with $292 million in it and say, thank you, John, for making those 14 events stand out. They just had one here, right here in town. I didn't even know it was taking place. Did you? At the uh, Trump around. Found out Friday. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> They're doing a good job promoting. <laughs> Did I even need like, uh, you know, a celebrity VIP boxes or anything uh, for that kind of event when you only have like eight people in attendance? Exactly. No, it's crazy. And yet these guys loom large as uh, we tip it off and tee it up for the uh, first round of the Masters. going to take place on Thursday. Uh, what, what, what do you think? I mean, does Rom come back? All, all of these guys uh, that defected for the Live Tour – it's the greatest thing that can happen. You you have bags of money. I mean, more money than you could ever spend in a hundred lifetimes. And nobody even knows you're alive anymore. It's absolutely amazing. Nobody, I mean, would anybody know what the results were from any of these tournaments? Uh, did they even publish them? What do you think? I don't know. Somewhere, I guess. I You don't see it in any sports show. They're not talking about it. No, never. I mean, do you ever see a highlight of, of something that happened on the live tour? No. Maybe some guy disappearing into the woods, never to be seen again. Now, that uh, is a possibility. <laughs> hey, I think John Rahm went to take a piss. I, I haven't seen him in two weeks. Where where the fuck is this guy? I I, I don't know. But, uh, I mean, uh, unfortunately for the PGA Tour, outside of Scotty Scheffler and maybe a couple of others, you have uh, mostly non-identifiable people on the tour. I mean, it's one nondescript schmink after another that ends up winning the tournaments. And uh, that's that's becoming a bit of a problem. So they need Tiger to do well. What would you say? Would you bet any money on Tiger Woods? The, the big headline shot. today was Tiger looks sensational in practice round. They always do this. Always do this. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, when Muhammad Ali. Uh, hang on a second here. Let me hang up with my buddy. Uh, it's kind of like when Muhammad Ali looked great before that uh, fight against Larry Holmes in Las Vegas. Uh, and they yeah. made Ali the favorite at 6-5. to five. And uh, exactly. I, I never made a bigger score in my life on a boxing match <laughs> as we came in there with, with satchels full of cash and bet it all on Larry Holmes. And we were right there with Holmes screaming at the referee, Stop it, ref! Stop it! <laughs> oh, yeah, that was that was a tragedy to watch that. One of the worst mismatches in the history of any sport. Uh, all right, Luby, uh, what do you think? Tiger to uh, not make it through the cut. second round of the tournament. To miss the cut, I would. I would, or if the cuts Friday, the Friday cuts, I would bet for him to miss the cut. That's the only bet I would miss the cut. Out. Oh, miss the cut. Okay, miss the cut. Like not. Yeah. You're saying he would tap. I'm out. saying he withdraws before the second round. Yeah, tap out. Oh, you're thinking I can finish the second round. I think he'll finish the second round, but he's not going to make the cut. I, if right. have these uh, illusions of grandeur. I know uh, he had that Masters, what is it now, four or five years ago, where he pulled it out of his ass. Yeah. But it's not been three or four Those years. Those days are gone, I believe. Oh, yes. I, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I don't think he can do it. I, I, I really don't. Uh, you know, wish him well. It'd be nice if he made a little run. You'll see every shot that Tiger Woods took in, in this 100%. tournament. 100%. No matter what's happening. I mean, uh, Ram and uh, Brooks Kepik uh, each shoot a 60, and you still wouldn't know that they were on the course because every <laughs> shot will be of Tiger Woods. He goes to take a shit. They follow him with a, you know, here's a Portisan cam. Yep. Like, oh, okay, great. 
passes gas, and uh, everybody's analyzing it. Uh, there you go. Hey, 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 hey Zinger, what do you think? He, he's not on the broadcast anymore. Huh? He got himself canceled out. Unbelievable. He should be on no filter, Paul Azinger. All right, uh, that's going to do it for us. So uh, bet against Tiger Woods. Don't bet against UConn ever again in your lifetime. 12-0 and 0 against the spread. A degenerate said dream. And realize that Tom Thibodeau is the definition of the word, the Yiddish slang, schlep. Uh, for Mike Luby Lubitz, I'm Jeff DeForest. Uh, a very enlightening, I'm sure, edition of the morning briefing today. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time right here on NoFilter.net.